Hi guys, so I am here with another important topic of finance current affair. So today we will be studying that why there is no transmission of the lowering interest rates in our lending rates. So if you like my video, do subscribe to our channel for regular updates. So moving on with the finance current affair. So in this document, firstly we shall be studying that RBI reduced its repo rate. Next, we are going to understand three reasons that why despite of the fact that repo rate has been reduced, the lending rates are have not been reduced. So, we will be talking all these with regard to some facts. So, starting with this document, central banks, we know that central banks all around the world are planning to reduce their interest rates to boost investment, to boost growth. Because amid trade tensions, everything, the investment, the consumption has been falling. So, starting with US, American Central Bank, Fed. So, it reduced its Fed fund by 25 basis points. So, with this, there is a question for you all that what do you mean by federal fund rate and what is one basis point? So, I am sure that you all be knowing it that federal fund rate is the interest rate at which one bank lends funds maintained with the Fed to another bank. So, the rate at which one bank lends the fund which it has maintained with Fed to another bank, that rate is known as the federal fund rate. And what is one basis point? This is a very basic question for a finance student. So, one BPS is one hundredth of the percentage point. So, why the US has initiated a cut in its repo rate or its federal fund rate? So, the motive behind the lowering interest rates were that US thought that the overall interest rates will go down and the medium interest rates in US will thereby be reduced. And the second point is that with this reduced interest rate, the cost of borrowing will come down and as a result, people were expected to continue borrowing and spending to spur growth. So, these were the motives behind lowering interest rates. So, on the similar lines, because the consumer price inflation is below target level in India, so this was an advantage for RBI to reduce its repo rate also. So, since beginning of 2019, RBI has cut its interest rates thrice by 25 BPS and currently it is at 5.75%. So, now also RBI is expected to cut the repo rate further by 25 BPS and the repo rate will now be 5.5% after this expected repo rate reduction. So a basic assumption in our minds would be that as the repo rates are going down, the lending rate will also go down and thereby it will increase the demand for loanable funds. But this is not happening because the interest rate on the outstanding loans of banks has gone up instead of coming down as against our expectation. So some facts regarding this is that in January 2019, the average lending rate of banks was 10.38% but it stood at 10.41%. And if we talk about the fresh loans, so the lending rate has fallen by 11 BPS points but it is not enough to attract people to take up the loans from the banks and to increase the borrowing and spending mechanism in our country. So this is the whole idea behind that despite of the fact the reduction in the repo rate the lending rates are not going down. So why is it so? So firstly for discussing the reasons behind this interesting thing we need to revise our basics firstly you all know that there is a bank and if you give money as deposits to a bank so you will get interest rate on that and secondly if the banks lend you loans so you have to pay the bank the interest rates and this lending loans for the bank is the source of income so it, this is the 
source of income for the banks so the question which arises here is that why the benefit of the lower repo rate is not passed on so further there are three reasons behind this so first reason is lending out all deposits so there is a credit deposit ratio and credit deposit ratio has been largely around 77% in 2019 but only in july 2019 it fell to 76.3% and that also because of the slower credit growth now the question which arises here is that what is credit deposit ratio which is at around 77% so credit deposit ratio is the total loans which is given by the banks upon the total deposits which a bank gets so when we divide these two we get our credit deposit ratio so now we have understood that what credit deposit ratio means so what is its practical implication for example if a bank has raised 100 rupees as a deposit so if we say that the cdr is 76.3% so it means that the bank's lending is lending out 76.3 rupees as loans so out of this 100 rupees there are requirements which have to be met by the banks so 4% of its deposit that is here rupees 4 is kept aside for the cash reserve ratio and we all know that what crr is crr is which banks need to maintain with the central banks and the next is 18.75% of the deposits as the minimum statutory liquidity ratio which is slr so this slr is the amount that the banks need to invest in the government securities or they basically have to maintain it with themselves and they have to invest it in the government securities so as you can see after deducting 4 and 18.75 from 100 we are left with approx 76 point something rupees and all of these deposits are the ones which the banks are lending out so we must understand this that bank is a profit making organization it is a profit making unit and if a bank can lend all its deposits as loans at the present lending rate then why would it be interested to lower the lending rates but if the situation would have been that there is excess funds with the banks that is the deposits exceeds the loans which have been given by which are given by the banks to people then the banks might have considered reducing the lending rate but now as all the almost all the deposits are used for lending loans so there is no possible way or there is no room for a bank to reduce its lending rate so this was the first reason behind no transmission of the lowering interest rates now coming to the second reason so this is very important and very interesting to note so there are we know that small saving schemes are run by the post office and with time in the time span of 5 years only the small saving schemes which form just a 4.3% of the term deposits raised by banks have now grown to 11.6% so there is a tough competition with the small saving schemes so why people are choosing small saving schemes over the bank deposits so because the interest rates which are uh, on the deposits on triple s is around 8% whereas it is just 7% on the fixed deposits of banks so first point is that the interest rates on deposits are higher in sss that is small saving schemes and second point is that in in by investing in some of the small saving schemes people usually get a tax deduction so there is a dual benefit for a person to invest in small saving schemes run by post office than in the fixed deposits by the banks so first is the increase interest rate as compared to the fixed deposits and second is the tax deduction so this eventually explains that why a bank is not willing to lower the interest rate on its deposits 
and hence its lending rates. So why would a bank be reducing the interest rate on its deposit when it is actually running on a lower interest rate on its fixed deposits than its competitor small savings schemes? So why would it further reduce the interest rate on deposits? And if a bank is not reducing the interest rate on deposits, then why would it be willing to reduce the interest rate on its loans? Because as we have already mentioned that it is a profit making unit. So in all this situation, the question which pops up in our mind is that can a government help to allow banks to reduce the lending interest rate? So definitely yes, because government has the power and it can change the parameters on which the interest rates on small saving schemes are decided and it can align the interest rates on these schemes with the interest rate on bank deposits. But then the question further arises that then if government can help a bank then why is it not helping it? So the answer to this question is that the money collected by the small savings schemes it goes into the national small savings fund and this national small saving fund money is further invested in the government securities and it is lent to the public sector enterprises. So, so can you see the link here that why the government is not reducing the interest rate on the deposits by SSS because ultimately the money which the small saving schemes are getting as deposits they are going into NSSS and this amount is further utilized to invest in the government securities or by lending to the public sector enterprises. So ultimately the government is the beneficiary over here. So to understand the mechanism we will take an example of FCI. So FCI is the food corporation of India. So here the national small saving fund it lends the money to food corporation of India. So what FCI does is it buys rice and wheat directly from the farmers and having bought the rice and wheat it sells the grains at a very low price through the public distribution system to meet the needs of food security. So the government needs to compensate the FCI for this to ensure that the organization remains a going concern and FCI is as FCI is helping to give low price grains through PDS to ensure food security which is the one of the objective of the government. So government has to compensate FCI and it does so through the allocation of food security. So let's take the case of 2018-19. So the revised estimate said that an allocation of 1.7 trillion rupees 1.7 trillion was made towards the food subsidy. But as the tax growth is not happening as expected, so the allocation was of 1.02 trillion. So what does it implies that the government as per the estimate should have given 1.7 trillion as food subsidy to FCI but now because of few circumstances because of the tax growth not happening as expected it is giving only 1.02 trillion. So a lower allocation towards food subsidy means that the FCI is not adequately compensated. Now in 2018-19 total food subsidy that the FCI had to claim that stood at 2.61 trillion. So FCI is short of funds as government is not giving them the allocation for food security as expected. So FCI had to borrow to continue its operations. So it takes 94,000 crore rupees from NSSF and the remaining balance by normal banking system as I have mentioned here. So what is government doing and how the government is benefiting from this? So the catch here is that all this borrowing should technically be on the books of the government because it is allocating less amount as food subsidy to FCI but the whole borrowing is on the books of FCI. 
so government is financing its fiscal deficit from this whole scenario so fci is a kind of off balance sheet activity for a government because the government owes this money to the fci and it should technically be on the books of the government but it is on the books of the fci now reason 3 is falling household savings so, so as, as we all know that the household savings constitute the deposits so if the there is fall in household savings there is fall in deposits also so this deposits or household savings need to finance public sector borrowing requirement so what psbr is the deficit of the central government state governments as well as borrowing by the public sector so the borrowings PSBR is increasing and there is a fall in household savings so this situation is a serious concern for the government and public sector borrowing requirements remain hefty at 8.5% of the gdp so we already discussed it with you the total borrowing is rising uh, and household savings need to finance them have fallen dramatically so what is the future outlook on this that the government has to meet its expenditure target for which it has to borrow more that will further put pressure on the interest rates and the conclusion which comes out is that lower interest rates are not just about the central banks reducing the repo rate because there are many other factors behind lowering of the lending rates and right now none of these factors as we have understood suggest that the interest rates are likely to go down in a major way so no factor indicates that the lending rate will go down in a major way despite of the fact that the rbi is proposing a fourth time repo rate cut by 25 bps so in this document we have studied some major concepts that as to the reason for not transmitting the benefit of lowering interest rates to the public in the form of lowering lending rates so to summarize there were three reasons the first reason was that the banks are lending out all deposits the second reason is that the government is benefiting from nssf and the small savings schemes and it is financing its fiscal deficit through this and the third reason is that falling household savings is there and the total borrowings by the government is on rise so this is a dramatic situation and a concern for the government so these three reasons should be very clear to you and i hope you like my video so please do subscribe to our channel for more such informational videos thank you